You came to see the funniest man ever to come out of Ndandane. Put your hands together for Mr. Tats Nkonzo. Yes. People have not switched off their phones. Still, please switch off your phones because we are recording this and there are white people behind the cameras. <laughs> Which means I'm gonna go look good because white people are good at shooting black people. <laughs> so please switch off your phones. Now, thank you so much for coming, guys. <laughs> Appreciate everyone coming. Because you, you hear the most weirdest excuses when people, because you get, Tats, we love you, we love you, really, yes. Listen, I want to show at Jobber Theatre 100 Rand a ticket. Hmm? <laughs> people, human beings, human beings have the most amazing excuses ever. And then they give you excuses that you can do nothing about. Oh, man, I would have come. If you did the show last month, <laughs> they ask you questions, you can't answer. Why didn't you do the show last month? <laughs> Start giving you solutions that you cannot use. Next time you do a show, right? Do it last month. <laughs> so I appreciate this. Thank you very much. It's hard. I've noticed it's very hard getting money out of people. Like people love money. World, everyone believes world hunger should end here, right? World hunger must end, it must finish. Everyone believes that. Until world hunger knocks on your car window. <laughs> then you're like, you are our world hunger, come on. <laughs> you are every robot, our ah, world hunger, come on. Ah, yeah, yeah, world hunger, come on. I can't give you money for drugs, world hunger. It's weird. Everybody's like, but we're used to it. It's the weirdest thing. We are used to homeless people. Like that's a very, it's not normal to be used to homeless people. Can you imagine being homeless? Homeless. Imagine that dinner invite. Hey dude, come to my place. Yeah, sure, work. <laughs> Have a payment, hey, how are you doing? Would you like something to drink? Forget my what would you like? Because I have nothing. <laughs> it's weird, but we're used to it. And that's and that's our thing, because we can turn it on and off. Sometimes we care, sometimes we do. It's like justice. Everyone believes justice. You do the crime, you do the, you pay the time. You kill someone, you get a good lawyer. <laughs> No, we are not good to talk about that. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> but everyone believes, in, everyone believes in justice. You do the crime, you do the time. And we believe that. And then we watch Ocean's Eleven, and none of us want George Rooney to go to jail. <laughs> it's, like, it's like that double standard thing that we have. And that's our thing. Like that's, our country is very good at that. Like, what is it? 9th of August, Women's Day, right? 8th of March, International Women's Day. A few days later, National Cleavage Day. <laughs> it's like, ladies, we respect you, but you kind of show us the titties! Titties! It's the weirdest thing. We were like, oh, you guys can't speak in the Don't know what it means to me. We're like, do you? Guys, I'm not kidding, it's an actual holiday, it's a holiday. I don't know if it's a holiday, but it's something that we celebrate. National Cleavage Day, that's what we do. All day, we look at women's boobies. And then we want to march. Respect women. Respect women. Respect women. Got me thinking, that's probably why we're so good at this marching thing. <laughs> Do you know get the joke? But that's the thing. That's the thing. Double standards. And I, I'm, ladies, I'm confused.
convinced. This, I'm convinced of this. There's only one thing that, that needs to happen for this country to change. I'm, I'm convinced. One thing needs to happen. Every woman in this country should go on strike. A sex strike. No sex with any man for 17 years. Oh, dear. Even the ladies are like, yes, strike, yes. Ladies, you go on strike for 17 years. Do you know what will happen after 17 years? Anything you want. I'm telling you, okay, maybe not 17 years is too much. Oh my god. Can, two years, two years. After two years, any because men will do anything for sex if it's kept from them long enough. I'm serious, we will. We will watch the notebook. We will buy front row seats to a comedy show. Ah, brother. You know, we will change the constitution because every man, men love sex, that's the thing. Every man in here wants to sleep with at least every woman in the world. <laughs> but we'll never say it, but trust me, in alphabetical order, if we can, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, Charlize Theron, Deborah Peta, Eva Mendes, I can just have fat girls from Precious. Every man in here, what? Every man, and that's the thing. That's the, that's why I, I'm not excusing it. But every man is naturally polygamous. It, it's just the only thing hard about committing to one woman. There's only one thing that's difficult about committing to one woman, and that's committing to one woman. <laughs> but we do it. But that, my point is that if you if you keep it from us for two years, I promise you things will change in this country. Because our president is a perfect time to strike now. A has, he's got what, four or five wives? Four or five wives. I'm telling you, no man can withstand being rejected five times a day for two years. Things will change. He'll be sitting there, what are you doing? I think. Mom Paul won't be playing it. Wood? You like Umshini? Would you like to change the constitution? It will change. And even if the president doesn't do anything, every other man in the country will be putting pressure on the government to do so. We'll be out in parliament striking equal rights for all. But we're out there like injured, injured soccer players. You know injured soccer players? Soccer players are the most dramatic people in the world. They'll be the, the most dramatic. Like not even soccer players, because soccer, have you ever noticed like when you get a yellow card in soccer? Not even yellow card, penalty. Like when a player gets a penalty, the whole team just screams at the ref. Which is pointless. Because I've never in my life seen a ref change his mind. I've never seen a Sorry, what? Is this how everybody feels about my son? <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad. I didn't, I didn't realize it wasn't a girl. That never happened. Referees are probably the most stubborn people in the world. Because the thing about refs, even if they're wrong, they will never confess. Which is why I think Oscar Pistorius will make a great ref one day. <laughs> yeah, now we're doing it. I was just easing into it. How do I, we put him on a pedestal, I think it's our fault guys, we put him on a pedestal too quickly because we didn't know him, like all we knew he didn't have legs and he ran fast, that's all we knew about him. <laughs> that's all, literally, what else, did, what else did you know about Oscar? What else, Any, what else did you know? I didn't even know he had a brother, <laughs> until his brother was in court, like, he fell on the Oscar, the boy. He fell on the Oscar, the boy. He also killed someone. Hey, fine. Oh, that's fine. That's fine.
this guy over here. That's the thing, nobody knew anything about, we didn't know anything, we didn't have the full story, but that's what we do. That's what we do as South Africans, we love heroes. And we do it with actors, with singers, we put them on the pedestal too quickly without knowing the story. Actors, singers, Hector Peterson. <laughs> Why is Hector Peterson famous? We don't know what he was doing there. For all we know, Hector Peterson loved Afrikaans. He could have been the one guy, the one guy trying to stop the whole thing. Mensa, Mensa, fuck the picky. Mensa, fuck. Listen. This is a the guitar. the most famous photo book in history. We don't know. He has a museum named after him. We don't know. In fact, if you look closely at that photograph, <laughs> if you look very closely at that photograph, but very closely, you can almost see him say, Serious, I'm, I'm, <laughs> because we don't know this, we don't know the full story. We too quick to make heroes, guys. Shabalala scored one goal in the World Cup. One goal, one. Now he's our national hero, selling us fish and chips. Now. We got a one goal. Ah, guys, come on, guys. Do you like Ikalamari? Too quick! We did it too quickly! We did it too quickly! That's, that's my opinion and I'm, and I'm right. It's too quick! It really is! Every, everyone now should go through a pro... Because that's a, that's a process that we go through. It's like if you do something sport-wise, you're a hero. But if you do other things, it's like this is our process. What is your name? Mm -hmm. Lance. Nice. <laughs> what do you do? You ride a bicycle, okay? <laughs> With no balls. That's freaking amazing! Go, go, go! Superhero, superhero, superhero! Which, that's what, and, 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 and celebrities, this is the thing with celebrities, they always show us signs that they're not okay very early, but we ignore them. We do, because they do show us signs that things aren't okay, but we just, we just, you know, they are perfect. Like Whitney Houston died a tragic death. Tragic, guys, tragic death. But we knew she was on hard drugs before things got bad. We knew something was not right the moment she told the whole world, the whole world, that all we had to do was say, Shubedu. <laughs> Great song, but what is Shubay doing? <laughs> what is Shubay doing? I'm sure you know backing vocalists, but all you can do is say, I'll be full. <laughs> Shubay doing. If, if a therapist prescribed Shubay doing to you, just a thing, just a, and prescribe, you would at least ask what is Shubay doing. <laughs> And the therapist would probably try and explain, listen, um, some, sometimes you laugh. <laughs> sometimes you cry. Because life never tells us the way you go. who knows Whitney Houston has a role to play in her death, is what I'm saying. We have a role to play. I've I, 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 I thought about this, especially with the theme. I was thinking, it would be very hard for me to explain like the things that we let happen on Earth. To me. Like if I was kidnapped by aliens, and I had to, and I had to explain us, not even black, white, men, just us as a people, it would be hard for me to do that. You know, because we do crazy stuff, like we kill each other, for fun, and 
take each other's stuff and share. Like even animals don't do that. Like a tortoise doesn't look at another tortoise. <laughs> No, but you've already got your own show. It's extra bumpy. The bump says extra. I want that shit. So that's what we do, and then you know, let me wait until this is asleep. Then the tortoise falls asleep. The tortoise falls asleep. There. why there's 1% murder rate amongst tortoises because everything just takes too long. By the time the tortoise gets there, it's already morning, now it's awkward, as he's about to do the thing, Timothy Trello, what the hell? What are you doing? <laughs> That's a very silly joke. <laughs> If I was in alien court, like if I was in alien court, like alien juries, alien prosecutor, alien defendant, and I was the only human trying to explain us, and all I had to do was explain why we do the things we do, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't represent us well, guys. Because the alien prosecutor will be there. <laughs> Maybe a translator that they kidnapped like way before, years before, and trained to speak the language, and now he's there with me. <laughs> Who is Cristiano Ronaldo? Cristiano Ronaldo, he's, he's arguably the greatest soccer player um, in, in our current age. Very, very good soccer player. <laughs> But you always get the hot shot, the hot shot noise, even in space. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. So basically, he kicks a ball and runs on grass all day for a living. I, okay, yes. Who is Mrs. Brahma? Mrs. Brahma? Mrs. Brahma is my grade one teacher. She's amazing. She, she taught me grade one. She, she's a grade one teacher, basically. So basically, she educates young minds and equips them for a brighter future. Yes, that is exactly what Mrs. Brahma does. She's amazing. So who gets paid more between the ball kicker and the educator of young minds? Now the whole ju alien jury is looking at me now. With eyes from like every like every eye is just I couldn't I couldn't defend why we pay soccer players more than I can explain it, but if I'm in space I can't defend it. I don't know law, so I just say things like out of turn. The, the guy would go, Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me. Ah, oh, badgering the witness, sustain. Get the verdict adjourned. Overrule him. How does you know when you watch those? Because they, they got the music, and it's like that final scene when you do your closing statement. Even when I was like Andres, I oh, but did a written piece, Andres. I feel like if I was prosecuting those cops, me, yo, I'd be there, okay? okay. <laughs> Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Cops are people. Cops kill people. <laughs> These cops killed Andres. I rest my case. I wish it was that simple. Because jail, guys, jail, and that's it, but all my clients would go to jail, and that's just the first thing. I'd like a not for saved. Not for saved. And, and the thing about jail, every guy in here is scared of jail. I know that for every guy. And every guy in here is scared of jail for one reason. I don't know if women think about jail as much, but guys, whenever we think about jail, it's one reason. And ironically, the reason looks like this. I'm not. And that's, that's, why they, that's the reason why they call it penitentiary. There is! Guys, there is! Pen, pen, 
Pena. Pena. From the P penis. Tensha. Tensha. Tension. Originally penis tentry is what it was. And everyone, everyone is scared of jail for that. I don't know. Mandela went to jail for 27 years. 27 years. They say that he never he never <laughs> no, they said, no, no, because he's a I mean, eh? But I just can't. <laughs> no, they say. They, we, I, 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 don't, I don't say I don't believe it, but I just got suspicious. <laughs> because they used, they used to tell us like a lot, especially during the struggle. They used to try to convince us that it never happened. Like every single. I see. It's just suspicious. <laughs> uh, yeah, you yeah, bought the ticket. Now you're stuck. <laughs> I'm scared of jail, man. I think if I was in jail, I, I'd, oh, guys, I'd be too. Every move, everything that happens would just be scary for me. Because jail, jail is cool. I was in hostel. Like, a, yeah. the, it, the, there's food, it's not the food, it's not the people, it's that thing. <laughs> That's the only thing. And I'd be just, especially at night, I'd be nervous. Every sound would be like, hey, doom -de -doom. <laughs> doom -de -doom. It's close to me. <laughs> Something evil is lurking in the dark. It's by my bedside. Oh, it's by my It's by my bedside. Slowly reaching, creeping up the bun. I start to scream. But the depression has already happened. If you're gonna go, it better be for something worth it. Apartheid, worth it. Fighting for women's rights, worth it. Nobody is going to jail for etols. That's exactly why etols are going to happen. Because nobody wants to get penetrated for etols. Etols. Etols are gonna happen because, especially Joe, Joe because aren't angry enough yet. That's the thing. We're not angry enough. We strike, but we didn't really strike. We just, we just drove slow <laughs> on the highway, like that was gonna do something. Like, yeah, I'm showing the now, but I can 10 kilometers in the 120 zone, but yeah, they will know we are angry. <laughs> and it was a legal strike, which means we asked for permission. That's like the weirdest. We asked for permission from government to show government how angry we were at government. <laughs> Do you understand that doesn't make that's like William Wallace at the battlefield in Braveheart. They can take our land! But they'll never take our freedom! Can I stab you in the stomach? That's exactly what he did. No! No? Can I pinch you in the arm? That, that's, that's what our equivalent of, of the... If you're gonna strike, strike. That's what I say. If we're gonna strike, strike. Because that striking... The, I'm from the Eastern Cape, guys. I, we invented striking. How? That was our thing. How? How? That's how we did it. How? 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 That's a strike. We used to scare the living daylights out of white people back then. How? How? Look at this guy. Flashbacks right here. How? 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 That's, a, that's how we did it back then. That's how we struck. Wow. And I ever noticed it. <laughs> Don't worry, so you can keep the land. <laughs> <laughs> but then, <laughs> shit. 
I don't know. Are white people scared? Like, on, this is an honest question. I did, are white people scared? Like, sometimes. <laughs> Just sometimes. Do you ever wake up and go, eh, but things could. There's so many of them. <laughs> At least there's the black people here are safe. <laughs> we don't know about the other ones out there. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but feel safe, please, guys. Be relaxed, relax, my brother. Are you, is this your girlfriend? And she's black. You, you are in. You. No, that's very smart. No, that's very smart. Very smart, bro. That was good. You're smart. You're thinking very smart. Because what are you gonna do? Can't kill. She's our sister. Oh, sister. I can't kill your husband. I will kill his whole family. No, guys, this is getting out of control. No, 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 no. This is now. Listen, you're safe. You're safe. I'm serious. You're safe. Take it from me. If they try to take your land, tell them tax. Tax said that you can stay. You're laughing now, but you know when it, when it gets desperate, you just pull for anything. <laughs> you'll be trying to remember, like, you'll be speaking your best closer. Oh, you can return the number! Oh, you didn't do anything! And then that last moment, touch! What do you mean, touch? Does anybody know touch? You <laughs> don't know touch, Pastor. <laughs> Sorry, where was I, my man? That's safe. Sorry, guys, I lost the trick of it. What was I doing? <laughs> it holds, yes. It holds, striking. If you're going to strike, strike. But at least what I've seen now in the Rainbow Nation is that white people, you guys are striking as well. I never saw this before, but for the first time I did. I was at the airport when one time shut down. <coughs> And white people started, how? Oh, man, they started immediately, how? Oh, well, they didn't do it like us, how, how? But they were like, as soon as they heard that the, the one time airline had shut down, they just started, how? <laughs> how, how? How did this happen? Which was amazing to me because I loved seeing, I loved seeing the integration. Do you know what I mean? Black people, because that, because our thing is striking, that's our thing, striking, it's in our DNA. You see it in our everyday life when we walk into water, are you panda? The fancy! Black preachers, have you ever seen black preachers preach? They're like, Utinko, Wonta! It's like it's in us! Pesulu, Wombamba! This is why I was scared of church. When I was young, when I was young, I grew up, this is why I was scared of church, because the pastors used to, they used to scream at people like the whole congregation did something wrong. Because I didn't know, I didn't know church culture, but you get there, it's like the guy, Yay! I don't know how many people are from Township. You grew up in Township today. Where, where is that? It's township, where are you from, madam? From Soweto. Where was the... Where was that from? Tanzania. In Tanzania as well. And then like Quadri. Of course I hear. They are here. Black people love their townships. That's one thing I know. And it doesn't matter how crappy the township is, Tina, we love them. White people aren't as excited about me. Like if I came here, how guys, I'm John, I'm from Four Ways. No white people are like, yeah, freaking Four Ways! Yes, freaking Four Ways! White people are chilled about where they abide. Tina, it doesn't even matter how crappy the township, we love our townships. And townships are crappy places. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are. Black people judge me harshly when I say it. But we all know townships were not built for beauty. No. They, were, they were built for beauty and her whole family, but they weren't built. <laughs> they weren't built to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye. They weren't. Better if you don't look. Have you ever been to a friend's house in Dipslot? Ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Exactly! You should go though. Because you know they've been to your house, right? You know? Just return the fame. 
But ta townships are not, but we love them. The only reason why black people love townships is because we, 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 we have awesome people there. Yeah. Crappy places, awesome people. Yeah. You'll find people love the places because of the people there. Awesome places, crappy places. It's like being, being, living in a township is like being stuck in a public toilet. <laughs> Except, the cubicle next to you is Nelson Mandela. Yeah. <laughs> crappy place, awesome people. Obviously, you don't know it's Nelson Mandela, it's a cubicle. Person. But every now and again, you hear like... And this is why I'm, it's weird for me when people are proud of the town. Because it's like they get out of the public toilet and then they're like, yeah, I'm from there, man. And black people judge each other based on the townships they come from. This is the weird thing. Yeah, guys, we are a mascot. <laughs> Sorry, what? Now it's like black anonymity class here. Yeah. But that's why we, we judge each other based on the townships we come from. So the rougher the township, the blacker you are. If, if, so if you're from Soweto, you are black. If you are from, if you are from Deep Sluit, you are black. <laughs> if you are from Sentin, coconut. <laughs> it's like you have to have struck, as a black person, you have to have struggle credentials to be a proper black. And that's messed up. In, in, my, in my language, it's closer. There's a thing called Izindozabelungu. Izindozabelungu, which means things of white people. So if you, if you like have anything luxurious, then you're like, hey, this guy thinks he's white. You go home, you... if I went home with a yacht. <laughs> like now, I'm being judged now as I stand on stage. Yeah. As I'm on stage now, it would be the worst person I had a yacht. I'm being judged. If you can find me, don't hey man, take a yacht. <laughs> I'd be proper judged. You would have been loom. If I and if I go home and like you know we go to a restaurant and I order sushi, it doesn't matter how luxurious the thing is. If I go home and I'm I'm a vegetarian, I move the nami do the Okay. And then if you don't answer, how gay? So maybe it's just the intonation. Question, okay. Statement, okay. Crazy stuff. And then I only gay and I don't mind homosexual, whatever, but there's only one thing I don't understand about gay people. Not even gay people, gay singers. Especially the guys. I don't understand that whole thing. Because gay guys who sing sing about being in relationships with the opposite sex. So they think about being into women, but they're not into women. Like, I'm not into men. <laughs> so I, I can't, I, can't, I mean, I can't sing to I can't imagine. <laughs> Even that was awkward, like that look. Because he expected me, but then, I can't, hey, dude. I love your smile. I'm not saying gay people can't sing about women, they can, they should, but just keep it real, keep it, keep it honest, because music has to be honest. If you're a guy and you're singing about girls, sing about girls the way you experience girls. Can we talk for a minute? Girl, I want to know your brother's name. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't move on here. Yeah.
love our townships, love our gay people. White people, you guys need to get excited about where you live. Like black people, even in terms of townships, we love our townships so much we have nicknames for them. Google to Googs. <laughs> Lanasia Lens. Eldos, Aldaran Park. <laughs> from Eldorado Park. It's Eldos now. They should just change them. We have Eldos. And the GPS, when you say Eldorado Park, did you mean Eldos? Like Google should should push back. The white people, you don't have four ways. You don't freaking... Bryanston, what's Bryanston? Bra nothing. You guys have nothing. You're not excited about where you live. We even have songs about, about our townships. Songs. So for black people who were moved from Sapphire Town, forcefully removed from Sapphire Town, moved to a place called Meadowlands. Meadowlands, they stayed. Burnt down businesses, broken down houses, they stayed in Meadowlands. You know what black people did? They came up with a song. Meadowlands, Meadowlands, Meadowlands is town or some. Which means Meadowlands, Meadowlands. Meadowlands 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 is time to some Meadowlands my love Which means we embrace the crappy place White people when a place is crappy You guys leave Don't get me wrong, you sing as well But you sing as you leave And you tell everybody Start spreading the name I'm leaving essay. <laughs> you guys don't you guys don't sing. You guys do not sing about your places. And you should, because music, I guarantee you guys, will get you through a lot of things. And um, I'm trying to seamlessly just build this in, and the next thing you know, I've just got a guitar in my head. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> I think there should be other genres of songs. Like I'm about to be a dad. Right? I'm navigating to you. Oh, thank you. I'm navigating through like crazy emotion. As a dad, I don't know the realities of being a dad. And I wish someone wrote a song to help me cling to. Someone writes a song, I love you son, cause I'm your father. When you were born, you became the most beautiful cock block. <laughs> I haven't had sex. In six weeks <laughs> And right now I've got blue balls As I'm changing your nappies Nobody writes those songs So I don't know Do you know? Because their father they was like yes. Nobody writes the real, the real, the real stuff And, and, and you guys heard about the 8 year old The 8 year old kid who got married to a 61 year old granny how do you even... Because the kid is scared, but the kid has no songs to help him, because it's a cultural thing, so it happens. But he has no songs to help him navigate through that experience. Nobody writes songs, and I think songs should be written. I think songs should be written. I know right now you think that girls are you. And you are being forced to marry one Just be strong cause she'll be dying soon And you will be rich by the time you are ten Her boobs are saggy and you don't know why It's cause you ain't and don't know gravity by the younger girls I know they look hard when they 50 Listen to me Don't go chasing goggles Please stick to the goggles and the grannies you used to I know that the kids in your class look so much harder than them But I think you move too far we need those songs, guys. Because now when the 8 year old gets married, he can 
sing these songs, he can get through the tough time. There are no songs. Have you guys realized in, like, in the history of love songs, there's not one love song that has ever been written, ever been written, that caters to polygamists. <laughs> they have to take monogamous songs and then just sing them like, but they can't do that. Because you can't be like, you know, you are the... <laughs> You can't, you can't. Like, there's not one love song that's ever been written. King Swati has 11 wives, guys. 11 wives. This guy doesn't have relationships. He has relation fleets. Do you understand? Yes. And how does he do it? Jacobson, what kind of songs does Jacobson must sing to his wife? You're the five that I want. You're the five that I want. He doesn't have your once, twice. There's not one love song that has ever been written that caters to polygamous. Not one. There is one, let me not lie, there is one love song written by, but it's an old song written by a very famous polygamist who calls himself um, Brian McKnight. You know what I'm <laughs> it's the only song that I know of. One, you like a dream come true. Two, just wanna be with you. Three, Girl, it's plain to see that you're the only one for me. Four, repeat steps one through three. Five, make you fall in love with me. If ever I believe my work is done, then I'll get another one. This. And you guys, we need music to get you through that. Like, I'm married. Any married people here? I can't see you. Right, my wife, because I play guitar when I sing, and my wife, people ask me if I sing to my wife when I sing, and I don't sing to my wife because, because my wife is a little older than me, and she grew up listening to R&B. Now, if you know anything about R&B, it exaggerates absolutely everything. <laughs> and it puts men under pressure. Like, my wife grew up listening to the most ridiculous bands with the most ridiculous lyrics. Some of you may know them. There's a band, one of them called Boys to Men. There's a song that came out, Boys to Men saying, I'll make love to you like you want me to. Ladies love that song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Baby, is that after making love, each eyelash, each eyelash, weighs about 5 kgs. Now, I don't know how many eyelashes a human being has, 100, 200, that's a 1,000 kgs. That's like having Kulomusi Zuma sleeping on your face. Or like seven of this guy. <laughs> seven, seven. Now why is it? <laughs> it's physically impossible to. Do. I think a more realistic version of that song should be, I'll make love to you like you want me to, and I'll hold you tight as I. <laughs> There was another band, there was another band, like Boys Men, that was also a boy band, called themselves As Yet. Okay, black people know this group, white people, if you don't know this group, listen to these ridiculous lyrics that came out. I saw the stars, the moon, the mountains and the rivers, I saw heaven when I made sweet love. house with no roof. <laughs> and while you're making love, you have the Hubble telescope stuck to your eye. Ladies, there's absolutely no ways, new ways, that you're gonna have 
rainbows and waterfalls and unicorns as you are making love. It's too much pressure for us. The best that we can show you is a view of the ceiling, the walls, and depending on position, the floor and other paraphernalia on the floor. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Pressure, ladies, and I, I, listen. <laughs> I blame the fairy tale mentality. I won't lie, because the fairy tale mentality is what got you guys confused. Ladies, if you get kidnapped by a fire-breathing dragon, <laughs> we love you, but the relationship is over. Do you understand? Like even even my friends would understand. But dude, what happened to your wife? Yo, me drank one of them. Give it up, like, yeah, I know, honey, honey. Uh, Therapists would even let you go. So, ladies, please, it's too much pressure. So, I'm taking it upon myself, all right, to write a realistic love song. See, so it's not a lesser love song. It's not a lower grade love song, it's a real love song. And if you are single and you want a man who can do this, I encourage you, marry him. Have his children, because this man is a keeper. A real love song goes a little something like this. It goes back to that because they say that the greatest songs come from the greatest pain. You ever heard this? Greatest songs come from the greatest pain. And if, obviously, if you look at black history, it's filled with pain, right? You ever notice if you beat a black man once, how music just... <laughs> Guys, you beat a black man once, ish. <laughs> You beat a black man again, hish. You beat a black man enough times, hish, hish, hish. Somebody cry, why, why, why. It's in our it's not even, it's not even an African phenomenon. Overseas, it's the same thing. You beat a black man once. Ow! You beat a black man again, You beat a black man enough times. This guy's laughing too loud, man. You're, la you're laughing like you remember. <laughs> That's how we got through the tough times. Music, music. Anyone notice if you scare a black woman? If you scare a black woman, how music just comes out of her? Huh? You! Huh? You! wasn't singing, she was afraid. Erin <laughs> Neville, have you ever heard Erin Neville sing? Erin oh, wow. Neville? Oh, wow. yeah. Sounds like he's pooping inside him. Erin Neville. I don't know much, come on. Where's the pain? I don't know. That's what it sounds like. The most unique, the most unique, the only other unique voice in music for me, Aaron Neville, is Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong is probably the next. Louis Armstrong, like if Louis Armstrong entered Idols in 2013, he would never make it. Wouldn't make at least. Look at the hello. <laughs> Oh, 
Can you imagine the whole... What is your name? This is Lewis. Darling. <laughs> what, are you, what are you going to sing for us? Your own song. Okay, go for it. <laughs> I see three. Thank you very much. That is, that is enough. <laughs> we have heard. His voice is too. It's too. His voice is too rough. And I don't know. That's why superstars. You can't make superstars from idols. It's idol because it's too unique. And his voice is too unique. Like his voice is so rough that if he's making love with his wife, it's it just sounds not consensual. <laughs> It wouldn't, it wouldn't sound... Because other people say my name when you say the name. Who's your daddy? So who's your daddy? And we went, Lauren, you are... Um, say my name! Say my name! The next to you, next to them, are you okay in there? <laughs> But Aaron Neville's voice is like that. And black people, that's how we got through the tough times. Struggle songs. Struggle songs is another way that we got through. Struggle songs, because struggle songs, we just come up with struggle songs. Easy, as black people. <laughs> people ask, you come to the strike, yeah, but how do you come up with a song? We just... <laughs> that's how we do, we just... Like, for example, we can strike about anything, because a leader will come up and he'll sing something, and then it's just a call and response. So it's either you echo what I'm singing, or you respond to what I'm singing. That's how every struggle song comes about. People think Dubuli Bulu is a struggle. No. <laughs> Dubuli Bulu is, is like recent years. We've been singing Dubuli Bulu way before then, except back then it wasn't Dubuli Bulu because we didn't have guns. So we used to sing songs like, Stranglishi Bulu. <laughs> And if there's black people, they will come up with a song. Simple, call and respond. Rhino Soras. Oh, Rhino Soras. Save the Rhino Soras. Rhino, Rhino Soras. Because I can just see the white people do the next meeting. Order, order, guys. We, I got a great idea. <laughs> great idea. <laughs> we feel like one of the, okay, so what we do is, right? <laughs> I call, you respond, okay? What do you, dude, what do you mean call and respond? So, I, okay. I'll sing something and then you sing it back to me. Okay, cool. All right, okay. So like, I'll go, I'll go like, um, Rhinoceros. No, you guys will sing it back. All right, you, you just have to be there. You know? You know, you know, you know. I'll touch this show. But what? Songs. That's the thing, and that's how we got through. Struggle songs is how we got through the tough times. And my point is, you guys don't have struggle songs, and we're gonna, and we are going to struggle, make you struggle just a little bit. I keep it real. We're not gonna kill you, but you will struggle. Just a little bit. That's it. I'm very proud of you for staying and not moving. I'm, so, I'm picking on you guys. But you know, I love white people, I do, I really, I do. The only thing I don't love about white people is that you guys came here 
and you gave us things that were absolutely unnecessary. I came and you gave our woman like polar necks and t-shirts clothes basically. Now everyone is dressed here. Yeah. But if you consider yourself an African woman, like an African woman, man, a trip, like a put of the soil, forget black, but if you consider yourself an African woman, then just show us them titties! Ah, ah, titties! Titties! Then you didn't even stop folding your arms. So bloody rest of my life. <laughs> one day is one day, I'm gonna get to a crazy place and do that joke and then, hey! It's <laughs> amazing! But, until that day, you guys have no struggle songs, so I've taken it upon myself, guys, to write you guys your very first white man struggle song. Okay, are you guys ready for that? Yeah. This would be a white man struggle song, probably sound a little something like this. And it hurts so bad I've got the skills and yet they choose the black man <laughs> And it hurts so bad I've got the skills and yet they choose the black man And it drives me mad How could I lose if the blacks keep running this country, we won't see the end of B. We've got to move to Australia. We've got to move to Australia. We've got to move. Like I'm convinced one day we will be one nation, right? We won't see color. <laughs> we won't see, you know, differences in culture or whatever. But that day is coming soon. And this guy is leading the way. <laughs> thank you, bro. You look very foreign. Where are you from? You're from here? Where were you born? Really? <laughs> Why did we respond like that? Everybody's racist though, eh? Brooklyn Day, nice bro. So your parents like just own you like you don't, you don't get pocket money. Are you still with her? Are you still with her? That was the worst of the exit ever. And how long have you guys been together? Uh, five years. Oh. Jeez, you guys are so... Okay, so when are you going to marry this girl? <laughs> when she goes home, that's the only joke she's going to remember. When are you going to marry her? I asked you and you didn't answer. You just laughed like it was funny. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, should I leave it or should I just kill you tonight? He's got that fake laugh. You know the fake laugh? When you just hold it long enough for the moment to pass. <laughs> the moment is still here, man. The moment is still here, I'm kidding. No, no, you can ask me what? I think you can earn me. Tell me if I must move on. Must I move on? <laughs> In case you didn't see at the back, she was like... <laughs> sneaky. You are sneaky though, I would move on. You didn't say boldly. Now... <laughs> He's leading the way, this guy. And as, as a people, I think we should... We, we, we must get together and 
the simple thing you can do is just make friends with another person from another race. I'm looking at this whole row here. <laughs> this, bro, it's, it's B-E non-compliant. <laughs> like all of you. I can see all of you. Which tells me there's, you are all white. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this here. It's so typical. Look at this here. I, I can't see all of you. I just get laughter. Therefore, we're all black. To all the other rows that are like this row, in this place. Make a white friend. Don't be afraid of them. I know that they're great, great, great grandparents. Probably killed yours, but that was back then. So make a white friend. Be it Steve and Jerry Ryan. What is your name, madam? Sorry? Dying. She's dying. <laughs> Dying. <laughs> Just make a white friend. This is for you dying and all the people that are like you in your room. Make a black friend. Don't be afraid of them. I know they eat pop, drink, mass, and probably. What is your name, sir? Have a bigger winky, but that's irrelevant. Just make a black friend. Be it Olani, Tobani, Tumsani. Your name, sir? Sorry? Some other name you can't even pronounce. Just make a black friend. What kind of people are you here tonight? You are there. But for the sake of my joke, you are all in one row. <laughs> and you need to make a white friend. Don't be afraid of them. I know that they're great, great, great grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> Probably made love to yours, but that was back then. When I said that, she fell on his lap. Hey, you're a lucky man, huh? A lucky man. No, we saw you, you went down there. Eh? No, you did. I mean, physically, I don't. Ah, guys. Indian people, are you in the house? I see one. Oh, shit. Indian people, you need to make. Put down that no fear. I had the time of my life.